Messi uh, gave an interview uh, last week, a lengthy interview to this uh, Spanish program, La Sexta, uh, to just to kind of update everybody on where his head's at right now. We all remember what occurred before the season when he sent the bureau fax and tried to leave Barcelona and was more or less forced to stay. And, and uh, this time around, he struck a more conciliatory tone. He talks about his love for the club and how he feels much better about things. But nevertheless, he still left the door open for, for leaving. Uh, and he talked about how uh, he is intrigued by the possibility someday of living in the United States and playing uh, in Major League Soccer. It was interesting because in the interview, he talked about how, although he recognizes he has a privileged life, he does crave anonymity sometimes. It would be nice to be able to take his kids and go to the movies or go to the mall. And, and you know, I, I, in watching that Maradona HBO documentary, I was struck by the claustrophobic nature of his life. It seemed like every time Maradona walked out the door in Naples or Buenos Aires, there was a crowd of people grabbing and clutching him. And uh, Messi, I'm sure, deals with the same thing. And so uh, in Matias Almeida, who's Messi's countryman, who's now manager in MLS, he did come out and say, yeah, I get it. I, I do think, you know, if you live the life like Messi has and that pressure cooker for all those years, he probably does crave uh, some peace and tranquility. And so it, it's sort of coming from that place, the appeal of MLS. Uh, but nevertheless, he, he said it, he's put it out there. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, now it's got people thinking that Messi will eventually make his way to Major League Soccer. Uh, so what do you make of that? Oh, my goodness, Mossy. Um, OK, so now we, we've talked before on the pod about how be careful what you wish for when some of these players that say, oh, I want anonymity. I want to be able to walk the streets. And then when that the, the, when the height of privilege is taken away from some of these players and reality sets in and you are ultimately treated like a regular person, sometimes that's <laughs> that's not everything that it's cracked up to be from their uh, from their perspective. Now, look, Messi is on a whole nother level and even his version of normal is something that most of the world cannot even comprehend. Uh, I, while I do think that he would be afforded a uh, more anonymity in the United States slash Canada, I, I, I think there would be a curiosity and I don't think it would be as, um, as comforting uh, or as enjoyable as he may think it would be. Uh, I still think that there, there would be incredible interest. Now, the difference between someone like Messi and Maradona, as, as we've talked about, is I do think that while there was incredible pressure and scrutiny and just uh, a world bearing down on him uh, when it came to Maradona, I think to a certain extent he craved that theater and he craved that drama and that platform. I, I think Messi, and, and I don't think it's actually played out, he has gone the other way, a much more private, introverted type of existence for one of the great, uh, one of the great stars. So that, that's all about the off the field type of uh, stuff. But ultimately, he would be coming here to play to play soccer. I would love to see it. I mean, we have talked ad nauseum about the fact that this is a player who from a very, very young age was given this, this golden existence in this bubble that is La Masia and then obviously playing his entire career up to now in that bubble of, uh, of Barcelona. And while oftentimes in the, in the back and forth between Messi and Ronaldo, I will cite the fact that, that Cristiano Ronaldo has gone multiple places and has had success. We have not seen that, okay, from a Messi. And not only would we see that in this type of scenario, but we would see it happening where it's not as, you know, when Cristiano left, uh, le left Spain, it went to the best team in, in Italy. If Leo Messi went to MLS and let's say he went to Miami, okay, that the parody that exists and is manufactured, he would not only just be being seen in a different jersey and in a different light, but in a league that is structured on parody, we would actually see what Messi looks like when he's playing not just with players that aren't of his level, but against other teams that are of equal and in, in a certain cases, superior level to him and what that ultimately looks like. So I think, I think that if this were to happen, it would be an incredible challenge to him. Now, it, the way he was talking about it, it seemed much more long-term. So I'm not expecting anything imminent, even though we know we're going to be talking about Messi and, and uh, as it comes up to the end, and even as we're into this uh, transfer window where theoretically he could sign a pre-contract out there, but um, it does. It is interesting, and it and and he also, I think, understands he wants to keep his options open and say good things about a league that certainly could entice him in the future. That not just for him, but for his family, like you said, would be something that he would enjoy. 
Now, obviously, if Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo wants to come to MLS, uh, they're going to be welcome, whatever their stated reason for coming is. But does it hit you funny on any level when you hear a big star say that the appeal of coming to the United States is precisely that people don't care about soccer as much here? Is that hit you kind of funny because, you know, what we're all striving for is to for the United States to become a rapidly passionate soccer nation like like in Europe and South America. And so in, in a weird way, it's a little bit of a backhanded slap, a backhanded weird reason to say that's why you want to come here. Does it hit you funny on any level or no? You actually uh, don't want the United States to become like these other countries and you're happy that, that stars can come here and, and live in peace and tranquility. No, because I think it's an antiquated type of view of the American soccer community and the American soccer public when, uh, and, and, and the sport public. Now, look, I'm not here to say that the United States culture when it comes to sports and when it comes to soccer is anything uh, in terms of mass uh, or history relative to other countries and cultures, but it's a whole lot different. That's why I say you got to be, you got to be really careful as to what your perception is versus what the reality is on the ground. And by the way, I don't have to tell anybody listening uh, or watching that, you know, our country is this incredible melting pot. And so remember in, uh, what was it coming to America where Eddie Murphy's character, who's a, who was a King and he comes from this uh, country uh, and nobody theoretically knows who he is. And he's walking through, I think it was the NASA Coliseum or something like that after a hockey game or something. And this guy comes up to him and all of a sudden is on his knees and bowing. And the girl that he's with has no idea why this is happening. I think that, I think that you would see a, a lot more hero worship and recognition from not just the American soccer community, but I think the, the community in general, then, then, uh, then I think he anticipates or, or, uh, or expects when it comes to something like that. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops every week. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.